Hey there, golfers. I'm Drew Mahol, the Second Swing Golf. I'm joined by Thomas Campbell, a Master Club Fitter at Second Swing. Um, Thomas, one of the most important things for golfers is the grip, right? And sometimes golfers, when they struggle, missing left or right is simply the grip. And so we're going to kind of discuss that today. You're going to give us some pointers and um, you know, help golfers out there that maybe it's just as simple as strengthening or weakening the grip and what that even means. And so thank you all for watching this. And Thomas is going to give us some good information here. And if you like the information, please feel free to subscribe to our channel for more coming in the future. So Thomas, let's get started right away here. Um, two hands, right, on the golf club, of course. Let's start with the glove hand, or for you, in your case, the left hand. What are the most important things to know about that? Yeah, so first thing, starting with the left hand. So notice how I have drawn a line on my, on my glove right here. So very important that we grip it a little bit more through from the edge of the smallest finger through your index finger, and then wrap the club on top. A lot of times I see people grip it a little bit too much in the palm of their hands, and then we grip it on top, and that causes to a very, very weak grip. Okay. And the other end of the spectrum, if you grip it too far this way, this is a very, very strong grip. Got it. So first checkpoint is to make sure that we're gripping it kind of through, through, through the fingers, and then we wrap that club on top a little bit. You'll okay. notice, the step, second step is taking a look at your knuckles. So notice once I wrap this on top, notice how there's two black dots that I have drawn on these two knuckles. You want to see two knuckles on your left hand. Um, if you have a, if you were always wearing a glove, you'll also notice there's a logo on these gloves. If you don't see that logo on there, that tells you, me that that grip is a little bit too weak. If you see a lot of logo, that grip yeah. would be a little bit too strong. So okay. that's the left hand. We got everything down for the left hand or the glove hand. Now we got the right hand. What should golfers know about that? Yeah, so think of a natural position. Imagine you're trying to shake someone's hand. If you're trying to say, shake someone's hand, you're not gonna shake your hand with your palm way open yeah. or your palm really closed. So if I'm going to try and shake hand with the edge of this grip here, it's going to naturally sit on the side. So you're not gonna shake someone's hand like that. You're not going to shake someone's hand like that either. So it comes up along the side and then just kind of wraps on top. So this part of your hand, so the squishy part of the right hand, is going to cover the thumb. This right thumb is going to sit on the left hand side of the, of the grip. And most importantly, is if you were going to look here, you can see how there are V's on both the left and the right hand. So like the crease, you can see here, is pointing up towards my right shoulder. The crease on this hand is also pointing up towards my right shoulder. So once you add that right hand, it's really important to make sure that both those V's are pointing up towards your right shoulder. If they are pointing too far to the left, this would cons be considered a very weak grip. And then if they are too far to the right, that would be a considered a very, very strong grip. And I noticed you did not mention overlap or interlock, or I guess maybe a baseball grip, or I guess using a, neither one of those, interlock or overlap. So, and it seems like those techniques that you mentioned would work for all three of those formats for a grip, right? It does work for all three formats. So there are three different styles to grip a golf club. There is, you have the baseball grip or 10 finger grip. So notice there's really no connection going on with these two hands. There is the interlocking grip. So notice how these fingers here are interlocked. So this, they're connected together. And then we also have the overlapping grip. So this pinky essentially overlaps the, the, thing, the, the last finger on, on the left hand and then just kind of sits there on top. I really don't have a preference between any of these three models. Yeah. Um, the, the challenge I have with the 10 finger grip is sometimes I see golfers gripping too far apart. Yeah. So I'd say if I have a preference, I'd say interlock or overlap grip is probably the best route to go if you can make a, a grip change. 
But understanding how hard it is to grip a golf club and how awkward it feels, yeah. whatever one essentially feels the most comfortable to you or any, any, any player essentially is the, probably the most important thing. It's important to get yourself in a nice neutral position, but if depending on being in 10 finger grip, interlocking grip or overlapping grip, I really don't have a preference. Okay. Yep. And then of course, one of the things that I've noticed in my you know, history playing golf is that changing a grip can be a very awkward and perhaps frustrating experience. And so one of the things that we would recommend is if you make a change, you gotta kind of commit to it. It takes a few range sessions to get used to it. But as we'll find out here with TrackMan, the results can really pay off, right? Yeah. There is one other thing that we didn't touch on, and that is grip pressure. Okay. So grip pressure is very, very important. I see a lot of golfers come in here and they're squeezing this club. You can see their white knuckles. Yeah. It's going to make it really hard for that club here to turn over. Yeah. Um, so recommendation that I have with regards to grip pressure is you don't want to grip it so lightly that the club's going to fall out of your hands, but you also don't want to squeeze the thing to death either. So imagine you are holding a toothpaste bottle you're trying to maybe squeeze the toothpaste and it just ever so gently starts to kind of pour out just a little bit. You're not going to grip it and all of a sudden it's just not going to have flying out. Yeah, so yeah. that would tell you the pressure is too, too much. But we don't want to grip it so light that the club's going to fly okay. out of your hands there too. So I think a good way to remember that is just squeezing toothpaste bottle where it's ever so slightly coming out of the container. For sure, yeah. for sure. Yeah. Well, we've got, you know, left hand, we've got the right hand, we've got the different types of grips, and now we've got the pressure. Uh, now I kind of want to see the differences maybe that TrackMan can tell us, where if you maybe really weaken that grip or really strengthen that grip, how much things can change. So can we hit some shots here? Yeah, let's do that. You can see two knuckles on the left hand, adding shake the, shake the hand in there. My two Vs on my left hand and right hand are pointing up towards my shoulder. So this is considered a neutral grip. Okay, so Thomas, that's your neutral grip there. And that's, you know, that's the shot shape I'm used to seeing. Yeah, that's, that's a pretty stock swing for me right there. Yep. Okay, so we've got a nice steady draw that's start at your target, of course. Now we can weaken the grip and then we'll see how that changes things here for you. Okay, sounds good. I'll grip it a little bit more through the hand. This bottom hand, this top hand's gonna be very, very far under. Your top hand's gonna be a little bit more on top. I can't see the logo on the glove hand. That looks like a lot of the shots that I would hit with uh, when I had my weak grip. Yeah, I was a little high and right. So yeah. the difference there was the face angle. Mm -hmm. When I hit my neutral shot, my face angle was called 0 0.8 degrees. That one was open 6.7 degrees. Yeah, so you're saying weak grip makes it more difficult to square it, and the tendency is to leave it open at Correct. impact. Yeah. So I, I, we can assume the opposite is true with a strong grip, where it'll be much easier to close it, and you perhaps will have a negative face angle number. All right, well, let's test and see what happens. It's going to be very, very far on top with the left hand. You can see a lot of knuckles, can see a lot of the logo. Bottom hand is pretty far under. All right, yep, there's that closed face angle number at minus 5.6. And I mean, we can quickly bring up the, <laughs> the three shots on the, dis the, the map here. And, you know, can kind of see the differences. Okay, so Thomas, I mean, these might be extreme examples here a little bit, but it does show that, you know, what might be comfortable for golfers out there, this, this is my, you know, using myself as an example, I've been comfortable for a long time with a weak grip. And it's not a surprise that my tendency, and some of you may have known this, is to miss to the right. And so it might be something as simple as strengthening my grip a little bit to straighten that ball flight out. And while it might be uncomfortable to get used to right away, it's something that can really help my game. Yeah, this is, you know, general trends. Um, with me swinging the same swing for all three yeah. three shots, 
by strengthening and weakening my grip, one thing we can definitely notice is the face angle. So we'll notice with the neutral grip, it was the most square face angle of them all, as you would yeah. expect, at negative 0.8. Yep. I like to hit a slight little draw, so that's why the ball curved just a little left, because the face was ever so slightly close. Yeah. We notice what happened when I weakened that grip. The club face stayed 6.7 degrees open. It's going to cause the ball to fly a little higher and spin a little more and go to the right. So curve there to the right of 62 feet. Mm -hmm. If we take a look at the opposite end of the spectrum, the strong grip. The strong grip there, my face angle was closed negative 5.6. So 5.6 degrees closed at impact, causing the ball to curve 128 feet to the mm -hmm. left. It also flew a little bit lower as well. So interesting that it flew a little bit lower while the face, when leaving the face a little bit open, flew a little bit higher. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of changing that dynamic loft piece too a little bit, uh, where if your face is closed, that does de-loft the club a little bit and vice versa if the club face is open. So this is just, you know, an example and kind of a, a visual, if you will, on why something as simple as how you hold the golf club can make such a big difference out on the golf course. So these, you know, trends that we've seen here, you know, they'll apply to golfers if you're missing to the right for your tendency, you're missing to the left, right? Yeah, that is correct. Generally, you'll see if your grip's a little too strong, it'll go a little to the left, a little too weak, it'll go to the right. However, one thing to really keep in mind here is if you're watching this video and you're looking at your grip and you're like, you know, my grip looks like it's a little bit weak or a little bit strong, but you hit the ball straight. I wouldn't change a thing. I would leave your grip exactly the way it is. You're probably making up for other swing tendencies by having that grip a little bit weaker, a little bit stronger. Mm -hmm. The end goal for sure is to hit the ball straight. These are great ways to get the ball to go a little straighter for you if you have a tendency to leave the face open or face closed. But if the ball is flying straight, don't touch it. Absolutely. Well, golfers, we've got the help hits here from Thomas. Uh, provide some great information on maybe correcting a miss to the right or miss to the left by simply changing the way you hold the golf club. So uh, thank you guys for watching and thank you to Thomas for providing the helpful hints. Uh, not a problem.